In this video, I'll explain the concepts of resource pools and vApps, and we'll learn how we can use resource pools to group together virtual machines for the purposes of assigning shares, limits, and reservations on a wide scale. We can also use resource pools to isolate and compartmentalize workloads. For example, we could create a resource pool that contains our critical virtual machines and use reservations or high share values to ensure that they get the appropriate performance. We could also create resource pools with low priority virtual machines and configure resource limit to place a cap on the resources consumed by those non-essential workloads. We can also apply access controls and permissions at the resource pool level and those permissions will be applied to all the virtual machines that are contained within that resource pool. So let's take a look at a resource pool example. Here we see an ESXi host with 48 gigabytes of memory. And within it, I've got a group of virtual machines called dev and another group of virtual machines called prod. And the prod virtual machines are configured with a one gig memory reservation. And here we can see we've created a resource pool for the dev virtual machines. And this is a really simple resource pool. It contains all the dev VMs and it has a 16 gig memory limit. Now this means a few things. Number one, it means that all of these dev VMs cannot exceed 16 gigabytes of memory usage. So the combined group of virtual machines can only account for 16 gigs of memory usage at any given moment. The other thing is that this resource pool doesn't guarantee any resources to these VMs. So if there is resource contention at any given moment, it's going to be the share structure that determines how many resources these virtual machines get. So let's take a look at the share structure and how it can control contention for resources. Here we've created resource pools for the dev VMs and for the production virtual machines. And the dev VM resource pool has 2000 shares, whereas the production resource pool has 4000. So the production resource pool is entitled to double the memory of the dev resource pool. So given that the ESXi host has 48 gigabytes of memory, uh, based on this share structure, we can determine that the dev pool is essentially going to have two thirds of that memory entitled to it. So the dev pool is entitled to 16 gigs of memory whereas the production pool is entitled to 32 gigs of memory. We can also create a child pool within a resource pool. This is a pool within a pool. And the effect of a child pool is essentially the same as adding more virtual machines to a resource pool. So in this case, this child pool and all of these production VMs can only draw upon the resources of their parent pool, right? Whatever memory or CPU that that parent pool is entitled to will be divided amongst all child pools and all virtual machines that reside within that parent pool. Now let's take a look at reservations. In this case, we've got a resource pool configured with a 16 gigabyte memory reservation. And this is a requirement if I'm going to create virtual machines with memory reservations inside of this pool. So if the prod VM has a one gig memory reservation, that reservation must be satisfied by the parent resource pool. And if I have 16 VMs with one gig memory reservations, all of those reservations need to be satisfied by the parent resource pool. If the parent resource pool cannot satisfy those reservations, the virtual machines will not be able to boot. So let's take a little bit of a deeper look at reservations within a resource pool and how they impact the ability to power on our virtual machines. Here we see a resource pool with a 16 gigabyte memory reservation, and it's been configured on an ESXi host with 48 gigabytes of memory. 
And now I start booting up virtual machines. And VM1 has a 4 gig memory reservation. VM2 has a 4 gig memory reservation. VM3 has a 3 gig memory reservation. And so does VM4. So at this point, I've successfully booted up four virtual machines within this resource pool. And if you add up all the memory reservations, it comes out to a total of 14 gigabytes. That means that 14 gigabytes out of that 16 gigabyte reservation for the pool have been taken. The moment you boot up a virtual machine with a reservation, it immediately takes those resources from its parent resource pool. So at this moment, the parent resource pool has two gig of memory reservation that it can still allocate to other VMs. And if I try to boot some virtual machine with a reservation that exceeds two gigabytes, it won't work. That virtual machine will not be allowed to boot unless we configure something called expandable reservations. And that kind of changes this scenario a little bit. So let's take a look at a resource pool configured with expandable reservations. Here we see a resource pool with a 16 gigabyte memory reservation. And let's assume that we're configuring an expandable reservation. Right? So the moment that we created this resource pool, it drew 16 gigabytes of memory from the host. And if I rewind my slide a little bit here, you can see the host initially had 48 gigs of available memory. The moment I create this resource pool, it takes 16 gigs of the available memory from that ESXi host. So now I start booting up virtual machines. And again, I boot up VM1, VM2, VM3, VM4, and they have a total of 14 gigabytes of memory reservations. And then I boot up VM5. Right? And at that point, my resource pool has two gigabytes of memory reservation that it has left to allocate. But in this case, the scenario is going to be different. VM5 is actually going to successfully boot. And what it'll do is it'll draw its resources that it needs from the parent resource pool. So notice on the ESXi host root resource pool, right? This is the ESXi host itself. This is our root resource pool. The ESXi host has 32 gigs of memory remaining before we boot VM5. And our resource pool has two gigs of reservation remaining. That means that the resource pool can provide two gigs, but the other two gigs are going to have to come from that root resource pool. And that's what an expandable reservation does. It allows virtual machines to boot up within a resource pool, even if that resource pool cannot satisfy the reservations. A vApp is very similar to a resource pool. You can configure shares, limits, and reservations on groups of virtual machines. So it actually gives you many of the same resource controls that a resource pool does. However, a vApp also provides some additional functionality. So here we see our vApp, and we've created three virtual machines that we've dragged into this vApp. Right? Our DB, app, and web virtual machines. And these three virtual machines make up a three-tier application. And in this case, we know that the DB server has to boot first, the app server should boot second, and the web server should boot third. If we don't boot them in the proper order, the multi-tier application won't work properly. So that's the main function that a vApp gives you that's different than a resource pool. You can actually go into a vApp and configure power on order. And when you power on the vApp, it'll actually power on all these virtual machines in the appropriate order. If you shut down the vApp, it'll carry out those shutdown operations in the opposite order. In review, in this lesson, we covered the following topics. We looked at how resource pools can be used to group virtual machines together and allow you to configure resource controls on a wide scale. We also learned that permissions and alerts can be configured at the resource pool level, and they will propagate down 
to the child objects of that resource pool. The ESXi host or DRS cluster potentially is the root resource pool. This is the actual hardware that these virtual machines are running on. And we can create child resource pools within a resource pool and they will draw upon the resources of that parent resource pool. Right, so all of the objects within a resource pool, whether they're child pools or virtual machines, will compete for the resources allocated to that resource pool. And if you enable expandable reservations on a resource pool, virtual machines will be allowed to boot even if they have reservations that exceed the capacity of the resource pool they exist in. Finally, we learned about vApps, which are very similar to resource pools, but they add on some additional capabilities, most significantly power on order.